another edition of Atlanta Live. I am your host, Deborah Isom, and let me tell you guys, we have a fantastic show for you tonight. And you're gonna say, well, you always say that, but it's always true, and tonight is no exception. We have an amazing woman of God here today. She is a counselor, she is a coach, she is a therapist, she is a teacher, she does, she's a trainer, she speaks at marriage retreats, she's, she, she counsels people and help them get into their places, their places of destiny, which is so very, very important because in this season, God is calling us into our places of purpose. So let me tell you something, you do not wanna miss this interview, she's coming up first, and then we have an, listen, She's beautiful too. And we have a second beautiful guest. He's an actor, has a beautiful smile and a beautiful book that he's gonna talk about. He's a triple threat. He can do it all, he can sing, he can do everything. But I wanna tell you something, I want you to sit and listen to both of these guests because they have one thing in common, well, more than one thing, but they both have their own takes on mental health. And we understand and know that that is a, really a problem in, in our society. And right now, the light is really being shined upon it. And we need to understand that it's nothing to be ashamed of, but there's a lot of help out there that you can, uh, you can receive. But we're gonna go on for our first guest right now. She's an amazing, amazing woman of God. And I want you to look at your screen now and see the spelling of her name, because her, the spelling of her name, I want you to be able to find her when you're looking for her, but she's so powerful until she can take that name that's spelled so differently and, 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 and use that for the glory of God. Her first name is Shelly. Her last name is Fafa. Now take a look at the spelling of her name so you can find her when you want to. Here we are. How are you tonight? I am so blessed. You are such an amazing woman of God. I'm telling you, when we talk in a green room, so much, first of all, you, people can't help but look at you and say, oh my God, she's gorgeous. But then you are gorgeous inside as well. You have so much to offer. So the first thing I want you to do is just talk about who you are and what you have to offer. My name is Shelly Fan Fan, licensed psychotherapist, proud Haitian American woman. I was sent here by God to bring people to a place of breakthrough. And I do that by guiding them to that place where kingdom protocols and psychological principles meet. That's who I am and that's why I was created. God is good. So when we look at your bio and it talks about the fact that you First of all, the, the main thing that you have here is you are an explosive speaker. Tell me what kinds of events do you speak at? Oh, wow. I speak at marriage retreats. Uh, I speak at conferences. I'm an emotional intelligence expert. So as a licensed psychotherapist, I have a lot that I teach on because most of the time, our healing, our breakthrough is on the other side of something we do not know. And so I teach the principles and the skill sets that really bring us to a place of breakthrough where we're really dominating in our marriages and thriving at work and showing up healthy in our parenting relationships. So I teach at parenting conferences. I teach at women's conferences. I teach at, uh, like I said, at marriage retreats. And I also do corporate training so I could bring all that anointing into the business space and teach business leaders how to thrive. Now, I love that you said bring all of that anointing because you also are an ordained minister. I am. And you know, we talked in the green room about the fact that so, so many people today want to be called um, uh, coaches. You know, they are, they are, they are, <laughs> oh, I can coach you in this area and coach you in that area, but 
your bio talks about the fact that you are a true counselor and a true coach. Talk about the difference. Absolutely. So coaching is an intervention for people who have very specific goals that they want to meet. And so they seek a coach to get guidance and strategy to bring them to that place. As a licensed psychotherapist, I provide treatment. That's evidence-based treatment interventions that help people to break through. That, and, and that refers to breaking thought patterns, breaking behavioral patterns that don't serve you, choosing to do things different, really addressing unresolved emotional injury. Mental health is a spectrum, and many of us fall on that spectrum. I think most of us, probably like 90% of us, yeah, right, fall on this right, right. spectrum because it goes from being you know, happy and whole and maybe just some emotional issues or circumstances all the way to severe and persistent mental illness and so helping people to find where they fall on that spectrum and then teach them the skill sets give them the opportunity to heal from the things that cause them to get there even if it's just genetic right. their counseling is giving people the opportunity to truly walk out their kingdom right to be well yeah, yeah, and yeah. and that's what that's what therapy does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. And then the other thing that I want, we talked about just right here on the set just moments ago, mm -hmm. you talked about the fact that you do speak at mar uh, uh, marriage retreats and things like that. And you talked about the fact that some people don't even understand what they should be looking for in a good, sound marriage. You talked about the fact that there are, sometimes people are in families that teach them without training them but just by watching their behavior they can think that you know it's okay for a husband to walk out on his wife you know cheat on his wife and that kind of thing talk about that first and foremost when it comes to healthy marriages we have to understand that being ready for marriage there are developmental stages in order to get there mm -hmm. and it starts out with having a very strong powerful and intimate relationship with your creator mm -hmm. because the creator that word of God that he has preserved for over 2,000 years it teaches us who we are it's our manual yeah. and so if you don't have that intimate relationship with the creator it's very hard to really know who you are and what you bring to the table sure. the next stage is really having a very healthy sound and fulfill relationship with yourself. Many people are in marriages and they have never achieved successful singlehood. Yes, and so after achieving that, when you finally meet someone of interest, then it's important that you court, you speak, you, you <laughs> befriend one another. You I get to a place. <laughs> you, yeah, you get to a place where you guys are finishing each other's sentences because yes. that friendship is so powerful. When the love doesn't seem like it's enough, there's something about that friendship that will continue to thrive. And it's at that place where you've cultivated that friendship that you can say, do we have purpose in being together? Like our union answers what world problem? And when you find that purpose with someone, it is at that place that you're ready for marriage. Yes. Now you talked about, um, talked about, uh, some, oh God, what did I, what, my train of thought. Okay, you talked about. Unlearning. He, yeah. Unlearning yes. bad <laughs> patterns. Absolutely. You about the fact that sometimes people are in families where they see bad behavior being taught to them because they view it, they see it, and that kind of thing. How do you, what, if they were to come to you or come to one of your sessions or come to one of your um, uh, speaking engagements, how do you teach people to un unlearn behavior that they've learned just by viewing it in their own homes or in their own families? Talk about that. First and foremost, I like to ask, what is your example of healthy love? And if you're in my office, most of the time, 80% of the time, individuals don't have that example of what healthy love looks like. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. there are two things that happen. Either A, I understand that what I learned was unhealthy. However, I just don't know how to unlearn it. Right, right, right. I, I knew it's unhealthy. I knew that it was wrong, but I find myself doing it anyway. Mm -hmm. And then there are individuals that didn't, don't even realize that what yeah, they yeah, learned yeah, was yeah. unhealthy. And so we have to teach them that passive aggressiveness is not a, a, a healthy way to communicate. Yeah, yeah. That using your tone uh, in a way that is aggressive is not an effective way of communicating. We have to teach care when you're prioritizing the needs and expectations 
expectations of someone else over and above yours in a healthy way, these are things that many people have to learn. We were never taught it, and if we were, we were most likely taught it in a very unhealthy way. Oh. And so marriage counseling and the marriage retreats and the intimacy coaching gives people an opportunity to unlearn and relearn and learn anew those things that would help them to thrive in their marriages. I love that. I'm telling you because the reason that I say that is because churches um, are, are born again believers they divorce at a higher rate than people who are not born again and not in church. And you talked about the fact that because that we have a natural enemy, that's uh, Satan, and he's coming after those marriages. Talk about that Absolutely. for me. Absolutely. Dr. Miles Monroe says it best. And he says that healthy marriages promote healthy families, healthy families promote healthy communities, and healthy communities produces a strong and healthy nation. Yeah. So if the enemy wants to take down a nation, mm -hmm. he will go to that kingdom that's marriage right. and, right. and break it right there. Yeah, and yeah. that's why it's important for us to focus on building kingdom marriages. Yeah, you said yeah, something yeah. so good. You talked about the divorce rate. Mm. The divorce rate, when you look at it in the world and, king, and divorce rates within kingdom citizens, it is the same. If not more, like you yeah, said. Yeah, it's a little bit more. There I think is, yeah, there is yeah. no significant difference, but we are called to be distinctly that's different. That's right. That's right. That's right. The difference is by 1%. We, the kingdom, we produce like 51% of the divorces. And so it used to be 50 50, but it's. We have, we've gone up a little bit more. So that is, um, that's, that's a problem. So what you offer the body of Christ is a gift. Absolutely. And people need to, 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 to pull on that and, and, and try to uh, gravitate to what, what it is that you have to offer. And we're going to give them your information before you leave. It's on the screen. It's been on the screen. But we're going to actually tell them and give, uh, let them know we, what, uh, how they can find you, if it's on Facebook or if, you know, website, whatever. We're going to give them all that information. Absolutely. But what, you're, what you have to offer is so important for this season because people are just really uh, falling by the wayside when it comes to marriages. And also, the other thing you uh, wanted to talk about and is needed to be talked about, mental health. Talk about that for me. Mental health is our superpower. It's our superpower, and it gives us the opportunity to walk out our purpose. It gives us the opportunity to walk into a place and the atmosphere changes because you got there. Mental health, it causes us to think clearly, make powerful decisions, and it helps us to take our rightful place in the body of Christ and to be a force to be reckoned with. Mental health. And so we have to commit ourselves to removing every barrier that keeps us from thriving in our emotions. Right. How do we expect to take dominion in the earth if we cannot take dominion in our own emotions? That's right. And there's such a stigma uh, attached to, um, to mental health. You know, a lot of times people think, well, you know, if I admit that something is going on, if I'm dealing with depression, if I'm dealing with, you know, whatever, anxiety, if I'm dealing with uh, a, a bipolar disorder, they feel like people are going to think they're going to want to throw them away. But, you know, if you break your arm, you're not going to expect people Come to on. throw you away because you have a Let's broken... Go. When your mind is broken, you need help. Yeah. Talk about it. Yeah, we don't, we don't get our eyes checked at the dentist. There you go. Hello. There you go. That's right. And so it is important for us to understand that it is a gift. I saw on social media the other day, if someone tells you that they are in therapy, congratulations. That's right. Because it's, it's something to be celebrated. Mm -hmm. It's powerful. It's yeah. you taking control over your life and That's understanding right. that you have the power to manifest. That's right. That's we right. have the capacity right. to influence outcomes in the earth. It's important. And so to get well and to maximize, I say it so many times, mental wellness is our superpower. It's only at that point that we can truly tap into why we were even created. You're as, you are exactly right. And I just think that um, what you have to, I keep saying this, but it's so powerful. Everything that you have to offer is something that we need in the earth today. Absolutely. So I'm telling you guys, I feel like you need to take her information. Now, she's from Haiti.
And I think she's just as cute as she can be. And that's why she has these funny spellings of her name. <laughs> but let me tell you something, you need to find this woman of God because she is absolutely powerful and she's gonna be able to speak into your life and break Amen. some curses off of your life. And let me tell you something, divorce, you know, that can be a family curse. And she can do it oh, not nice. just because she's a, a counselor and all these different things, but she's a woman of God. She's a minister ordained by God to, 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 to meet you where you are so that she can break those curses off of your life and to help you to navigate both spiritually and naturally. So I'm just going to tell you right now, the woman of God is somebody that you need to, 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 uh, to, to connect with. And mental health, same thing. That's a curse. So you need someone who's anointed to help you to navigate both Amen. spiritually and naturally, woman of God. Now listen to me. So when you, um, when you see people, when they come to you with all of these uh, situations, and I need you to answer in one minute because we're coming to, going to a break and we're coming back with you now. Okay. But when people come to you and they begin to describe to you uh, the issues in, in that, that are going on in their, in their lives, what are, what are the first steps before they actually move into being, becoming healthy? What would you uh, tell them to do? The, the first steps. Well, the first step is awareness because change cannot happen happen outside of a state of awareness. So helping them to understand that the things that they are going through are these things. For example, well, I don't do the things that I love to do. That sounds like a symptom of depression, mm -hmm. right? I have this butterfly feeling on the inside of me. I can't get my thoughts to turn off. Those are all manifestations of anxiety. So helping people to understand that there's a word for what you're going through. Mm. And there is treatment and breakthrough for what you're going through as well. So the first step is just to not just say these things are happening to me, but understand that these things are happening to me, but there's some, there's a name for Absolutely. this. Because if a person doesn't know there's a, there's, this is real, there, yes. there's a name that connects with this, yes. they can't receive that help. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. Like procrastination. Sometimes people come in and, and they understand that they're procrastinating, but when we put a word to it and we say that's self-sabotage, there's something on the inside mm. of you that causes you to not believe that you, des you are deserving of what you're trying to achieve. That's good, girl. Oh my God. Let me tell y'all something. We are in a session. I told this woman, God, she needs a television show. She's powerful. Listen, guys, we're coming back with more of this powerful uh, interview. But we got to go to the song set now. We're going to uh, listen to Shay Samuels, and she's going to sing Beautiful. Oh my God.
extraordinary and you're all so your much more let your light shine you think you were girl you are so And she really is. So talk about, you, you talked about when we were on break, you were talking about how people can normalize things. And, and, and there's, there's the underlying issue there, and they're not seeing that. Talk about some of those things and what, what we need to do there. Absolutely. I say this all the time. What keeps me in business are people <laughs> who normalize abnormalities. Mm. And so you talked about, like, what's that first stage in getting people to a place of breakthrough? And I said awareness. And the reason why that's important is because if we can understand that there's more, that I can actually get eight hours of uninterrupted rest, I can actually be in a healthy relationship, there's such a thing, we normalize the inability to commit to one to another person. That's that's an issue. There's a deeper rooted emotional issue attached to that. That inner critic that causes you to talk yourself out of your prosperity. Mm -hmm. That inner critic that is uh, ha, that, that sets perfection as a goal. That's a that's a manifestation of a lack of self acceptance. Perfectionism <laughs> is good. truly a lack of self acceptance. Your ability to live for yourself and everything is as a result of your children. You live your life through your children. You don't have a life of your own. Those are all emotional issues. There are things there, deeper rooted issues that we have to uproot. But what happens is people just kind of flow and they function and they mistake in that Mm -hmm. as healing. So the fact that you don't want to be promoted or go for that promotion, you have 20 projects that you've started and you're not, a, you're a great starter, mm. but you're not a finisher. There are deep rooted issues in all of that. Your lack of sleep, your inability to make effective decisions, your inability to love, your inability, your inability to be vulnerable. These are all superpowers. There's no healing if you cannot be vulnerable, if you can't admit that you're wrong before someone or tell them that you're sorry or not being able to see fault or your inability to take personal responsibility, your victimized mindset, your poverty mindset. These are all rooted in deeper issues and there's breakthrough and healing for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, girl, let me tell you something. You are something special because you are passionate I am. about what you're saying. Absolutely. You are so passionate about it. And listen, it takes passion to be able to help people to come to their place, to, to find out where it is that God uh, is calling them to be. All right, let's talk about your blue. What's going on with your blue and your pearls today? What are you talking about? Are you talking about the, one of the best decisions I made in my life, and that was to join Zeta by Zeta Sorority Incorporated. You are representing Honey Bunny. You are looking awesome. You are looking like a Great woman God. in her, a finer lady. You That's certainly right. are. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Very nice. Now, tell them how to find you. You know, I know that there are people out there that want to get some counseling in all areas, marriage and all these different things. They're procrastinators. They know they're supposed to be going higher in, in several areas. They, they need to get into this therapy. Some of them just need you to come out and, and speak, speak at their marriage count, uh, marriage retreat. Some people just want you to come in and talk about, uh, uh, you know, a, a women's retreat. She is just, a, she's a preacher. She's a woman, she's a female preacher who has all of these other things going for her. She's gonna be a blessing in your organization. She's going to tell you exactly how to find her. For those who are ready <laughs> to reach for the hem of that garment, 
reach for that garment for your healing. It's www dot ask .com. and you said that my name is spelled weird I would like to say it's spelled unique yes S -S right -E -L -L -E. I love it -E. so www.askshelly.com they can book me there they can connect with me there they can book a consultation there so that's the best way to reach me and I'm ask Shelly on all social media platforms Amen. Ask Shelly. Let me tell you something, y'all. I told her she needs a television broadcast. Now, she lives in Florida, but we're begging her to move to Atlanta. <laughs> but I'm telling you, she needs, to, she needs to be here in Atlanta, and she, you need, really, honey, I believe that you are called to television to share what, what I mean, I know you share with your uh, 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 your clients one on one, but I believe there should this. You need to be able to the stuff that you're talking about. People need all over the country and the world to Absolutely. hear uh, what you're sharing because people are broken, and especially uh, because of the pandemic. We just got a couple of minutes. Talk about what's going on in the in the hearts and the minds of people now in this pandemic situation. Talk the pandemic exposed our emotional injury. Yeah. Yeah. In addition to that, for those who didn't feel that they were emotionally injured before, we are experiencing, there are, we have an influx of referrals from people who are manifesting symptoms that resemble trauma. Mm. So that goes to show you just how traumatic 2020 and 2021 has been for people yeah. all around the world. All right, guys, we have just had an amazing um, interview with um, this woman of God. And I'm telling you, I want you to connect with her because there's so much uh, that she has to offer. When is your book? When Are you working on a book? <laughs> are you working on something? I'm working on three projects right uh -huh, now. Uh -huh. You're just reading my mind. I haven't even shared that with you. <laughs> I am, and I am looking forward to releasing that at the beginning of 2022. Very good. And I actually do have a book right now. It's called Struggling to Keep the Vows. I was a collaborating author on that project. They can go to my website, www.askshelly.com. It's Struggling to Keep the Vows, and it just exposes the challenges of marriage, and it and motivates our couples to fight. Awesome. Listen, guys, go to that website, get that uh, book, and look out, you know, for the stuff that's coming out in 2020. She's amazing. I love her. Now, we're going on to the song set once again, and we're going to hear from Shay Samuels, and she's going to be singing, It Will Be All Right.
I promise you it will be all right. When I was Amen. We have some beautiful singing tonight as well, uh, but we have a, a, an amazing guest right now, and he is uh, Ron Godfrey. He is an actor. He's an author. He's an entrepreneur. He has a clothing line. Uh, he can sing and dance and do every, anything you wanted him to do in the in the uh, <laughs> in the line of entertainment. But you know what? He's also a man of God, and that is his strongest suit, along with the fact that he has a million dollar smile. So listen, ladies, don't get all messed up and hot and bothered out there because he is a man of God, and more than that, he is a man with a with a. Um, with a message. He's a man with a message straight from God. And he has this book that's packed full of things that are going to absolutely bless you. So I want you to be on the lookout to get this book into your library. How are you tonight, man of God? I am doing great. Thank oh you. my God, don't smile. <laughs> I, let me just, husband, his smile is great, not as great as yours. And I love you and I miss you, honey. <laughs> Now listen, wow. man of God, let's just talk about the fact, you know, you talked about your, a little bit about the testimony about your act and how you got into acting. Talk about that for me. Well, um, I was living in Alabama at the time, mm -hmm. and I, I had never... But you're not from the South. No, not originally. I'm originally from Connecticut. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I was living in Alabama, mm -hmm. and I had never aspired to be an actor. I always wanted to be an entertainer when it came to music. Yeah. Because, you know, I sing, I play keyboards, yeah. you know, everything like that. But I just woke up one day and I said, you know what, I'm going to become an actor. And <laughs> four, months, four months later, I was on stage performing my first stage play. Then four months after that, I did my first short film. Four months after that, I did a feature film. And then three months later, I was on Tyler Perry Studios. And then what? it goes from there. God is good, right? Yes, ma'am. And, and it's all about getting in your purpose, right. what God has purpose for you to do. So you, you've always known that you were called to be an entertainer. Right. But this was just, God just placed this in your spirit about the acting, and right. you just moved forward. I just moved forward. God is good, isn't he? Yes, he is. Yes, he He's is. awesome. He is really good. <laughs> so when, if there are young people out there listening to you, or even not so young people, and they're feeling like, like a pull, like God is saying, move into this area, do this, what, what would be your advice to them reg regarding that? Just trust God. Have faith in him and have faith in yourself. Yeah. Don't be afraid to fail. If you fall seven times, get up eight. Amen. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Now we're going to talk about your uh, clothing line. Okay. Let's talk about that. What is the name of that uh, wonderful clothing line? <laughs> <laughs> it's called Grind and Conquer. Grind and Conquer. Grind and Conquer. Like it was born in the gym. I was in the gym when I came up with that, uh, that idea, uh -huh. and it's, it's a broad statement because I was thinking about it as far as, you know, my, my, my athletic, you know, abilities and, and my physique and all that kind of stuff, uh -huh. but I thought about it, um, you can apply it to everyday life. We're all on the grind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> trying to conquer our goal, whatever goal we have set for ourselves. Yeah. So, you know, I have a line out called Grind and Conquer, I, I, and, and, it's, and it's expanding really, really quick. Yeah, talk to me about it. So what kind of clothing is it? Well, right now I have T-shirts. Mm -hmm. I just came out with tank tops for the ladies. Oh, okay. Um, next year I'm going to be coming out with the slides, oh, the backpacks, okay. and 
the tennis shoes. Very nice. Yes. Very nice. So how do, how do we ladies and gentlemen find your line? Is it online? What do we do? How do we do it? You can go on my website, okay. and that's rongodfrey.com. Yeah. And it's right there. All right, then. Very nice. You're just doing everything. God just blessed you with so many gifts and so many talents. Yes, what a, what, that's amazing. Now, you talked to me about um, um, a, a testimony that you want to give about how you came to know the Lord as your Lord and Savior. Well, I was very young. Mm -hmm. um, I, was, I was born and raised in the church. Um, I had no choice <laughs> but oh, to go. Imagine that. You know, I, I had no choice but to go. Our services started at 8 o'clock, and Mama had my clothes laid out at 7, and she was like, you know, go ahead and get dressed. And it wasn't, no, it wasn't a thing about, I don't want to go. I know that's right. I, I had was to in go. that kind of family. Yeah, I had to go, but I thank God for that because doing that has shaped me into the man that I am today. And um, I, I became to, I came to know the Lord at a, at a very early age. Mm -hmm. I was 13. Yeah. yeah and I, I'm glad early. I still know him. Yeah, that's very early. Yes. But you know what? When people get born again early, a lot of times they, you know, they don't, well, even when you get born again later, I, I didn't get born again. Well, I was in church all of my life, but I didn't really get born again until I was 29. Okay. So when you get born again, especially as early as you did, you don't always stay on that. Path. Path, you right. know, you kind of, especially with you in the entertainment industry. Right. Tell me, talk about your path. Was there a time? Because you know, a lot of times people say, "Well, you know, I must not be saved, or I'm not born again," you know, because I did this or I did that or I did this wrong thing. Talk about your journey and what it means to know the Lord, even when you may have, you know, fallen off a track at some point. Well, one thing I know about God, He's a forgiving God. Yes, He is. And He's a God that allows U-turns. That's exactly right. So if you're going in the wrong direction, he will allow you to make a U-turn, you know, without giving you a ticket. <laughs> I love that, yeah. And, and you know, I, I've made, you know, we've all made wrong That's turns. That's right, yeah. You know, but, you know, God is, is he's faithful and he's just to forgive. Oh, yeah, yeah. The problem is, is we don't forgive ourselves as quickly, you know, but he gives me the strength to forgive myself. He gives us the strength to forgive ourselves and then we can move on. I love that because, um, that's the big problem. Right. Um, and, and a lot of times people, they, they, they get into some area that they, where they miss the mark because sin is just missing the mark. Right. And so they kind of miss the mark and then they run away from God. And that's exactly the wrong thing to do. Right. Isn't that right? right? Talk about that. Well, I mean, at that point in life, we should be running to him. <laughs> that's right. Because if we run away from him, we're just running further into the darkness instead of going into the light. Yeah. So I would encourage anybody that, you know, don't, don't beat yourself up. If mm -hmm. you're going in the wrong direction and you wake up from day to day and find out you're still living, that's, that's your right. chance that's right. to reconcile with him yeah. and you'll be all right. So how did you start with music? How did you get into the music? In thing? church. <laughs> <laughs> I, st I started on drums mm -hmm. and then I went from drums to the guitar. Oh my God. Lead guitar. Yeah, several instruments. And then from there to the piano and I, just, I stayed right there. Yeah. yeah. I tried my hand at the trombone a little bit, but that, that wasn't for me. Yeah. But the piano, yeah. And so singing, yes. Your family, are you from a musical family? I am. My mother and father, both. My father's a guitar player. Well, he's, he's no longer with us, yeah. but um, he was a guitar player, singer. My mother's still here. She sings. So, yeah, it, it's, it's in the blood. Yeah, it's, it's in definitely the blood. in the blood. And, and I love that because, see, a lot of times young people, and I, you're, you're still a young person, they don't, <laughs> they don't understand that when God places gifts and callings on the inside of you, it's to get you to a place. It's right. to get you to a particular place. So when we ignore what God has placed in us, it, you can't get to that next level or exactly. that next thing that, that you're supposed to be doing. Because you talked about you were, you were playing your instruments, you were singing and doing all that kind of thing. But then one day the Holy Spirit said, it's time to start acting. Mm -hmm. And then when you, when you receive that, then you were able to move on into that. Is that correct? Exactly. And uh, even in my acting, there are certain things that I won't do. Oh, yeah. You know, um, there are certain lines that I won't cross um, because of my beliefs, yeah. you know, and I just, I just choose not to cross those lines. And God has been blessing me. You know, I, I made him a promise, and he, I've been keeping my promise, and he's keeping his. <laughs> Man, you know? apparently, because you're moving quickly up that ladder. <laughs> but let's talk about your book, okay. Crying Out in the Dark. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. Yes, ma'am. Amen. 
Rock, you say yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay, so l tell me about it. Tell me what is this book all about? What is what are, what are we talking about? Uh, the book, first chapter says my early years. Talk about early that. Early years, yes. Um, my book is an autobiography, mm -hmm. and I talk about real life events that happened to cause depression, mm. which is at an all time high nowadays, you oh, know, yeah, with the pandemic and the different devastations like within Haiti and even in our own country, you yeah, know, we, yeah, we, we're yeah, yeah. looking at devastation every day. You that's know, true. So, um, but I'm glad that you brought up in Haiti because that's really an area. Listen, guys, we need to be praying for Haiti. Our first guest, she is actually from Haiti. Right. Uh, but listen, we need to be praying for Haiti because they they're suffering so much devastation right now, and that is an, an area that we need to be praying for them, naturally and spiritually. Very good. Thank you for bringing that point yes, up. But talk about that for me. Um. It's it's depression is real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's real. Yeah. And most black men, if I may say, mm -hmm. don't talk about it. They're afraid. Yeah. Yeah. In my opinion, they're afraid because of the stigma mm -hmm. that we're held under. It's true. You know, always show, you know, strength and don't let anyone see you cry and yeah. all that kind of stuff. And what they're doing is suppressing. I chose to release Amen. because in suppressing, was making it really bad for me, mm -hmm. you know? And I want people to know that it's okay to not be okay. Hmm. That's right. Because there's That's help. Right. That's help. That's help. There's help. Yeah. So. Um, so you, how do you, how, I'm going to ask you this. I'm, I know you're not a doctor, but you've experienced <laughs> some of these things. How did you know, how did you know that you were moving into depression? How did you know that this is what, you know, we talked about earlier with our first guest, you know, it, Sometimes people have symptoms, but they don't know that this is there's a name for this okay. You know you're feeling this but there's a name for why you're feeling uh, this way and You know the Bible says that his name is above every name So right. if you can put that label on it and figure out what it is Then you can bring it before the Lord and you can get deliverance from it So talk about what were you feeling what was going on in your life? Well, I didn't I didn't figure it out until I was older oh. until my adult years Wow, wow. Because I started having different types of, you know, anger, and I noticed I would shut down. And depression comes in different forms. Right. You have overeating, you have undereating, you have uh, muteness where you don't not talking, you don't, you know, you just kind of, you know, withdraw yourself. Mm -hmm. What I did, I cried a lot. Okay. Okay. I cried a lot, and then I would withdraw. I would shut down until it got to the point where it was just making me sick. I started losing weight all that kind of stuff, and it was time for me to release exactly. at that point. Wow. And then that's when the book came. Amen. Yeah. Now, I, I, I know that, uh, I don't know if you want to share this, but I hope you will, because you talked about three areas that this book is going to cause you to, mm -hmm. to move into three emotions. Three emotions, right. Let's talk about those three emotions. Um, when you read the book, you're going to laugh, you're going to cry, and you're going to get angry. Mm. All three. Wow. <laughs> now, you know what? When you said that to me initially in the green room, I, I was like, wow, you're going to be going through these emotional roller coasters. That means you're, it's, that book is, you're telling me that this book is going to make me feel. Right. And I wasn't sure that you were being sincere because, you know, people say things mm -hmm. that to sell books. Right. But you share something with me, and I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, he, that, you, he shared a story with me that's in his book that I immediately had an emotion, a very strong and intense emotion. Do you want to share that? that you sure, said? sure. Um, in my book, I shared a uh, particular event where I had a babysitter that um, took it upon herself to want to teach. How old were you? I was around six years old. Six years old. She wanted to show me how to... Um, touch a woman at an early age and how a woman should be touched so that therefore when I got older I would know what to do. I, that, when you told me that, that really, it was, it, almost, it broke my heart. Yes ma'am. Because it's so sad that we live in the, you know, it used to be when we were growing up, when I was growing up, um, we would say it took the whole village, everybody, to, to raise a child. Right. But when you're in a society where you can't, uh, you can't trust the adults mm -hmm. to do what they need to do for children, that, that's, that's a very sad place to be. Exactly. 
So how, how long bef after that kind of a, 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 a event happened in your life did you begin to experience feelings of depression? Um, it came along around about the age of, I say, around 16, 17, because by that time, more had happened. And then I started experiencing rejection and different things of that nature. And it just compiled on, you know, one on top of the other. And then I got to a place where I was becoming explosive, you know, and then I saw things happen with my parents and, you know, di different things happen even outside the home. Um, it was just, it was unreal. And I talk about it. In the book. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Praise God. So, um, your, you, you experienced um, the emotion that you most frequently experienced because of this was sadness. Sadness. Because you talked about crying <clears throat> and this right. kind of thing. And so, how did that make you feel? Because, like you said, a lot of times they tell me and boys, you know, don't cry. So how, how do you feel as a male going through something that has a name, depression, mm -hmm. and you're reacting the way that you should because you're going through this thing, but at the same time you're having people say, well, you shouldn't re react that way. Well, how do you feel and what's going on with you? Well, at, at first, um, you know, I felt ashamed mm -hmm. at first, but then I got to a point where I didn't care. It's because this is how I feel. And I have to get this out before I become destructive or be before I be, you know, start acting in a way that's unbecoming of my character. Exactly. You know, so I had to release it. So, you know, at this point now, I don't care. I didn't care who, who said anything. Yeah. As long as I felt better. My God. Well, you know what? That's a maturity that is absolutely hard sometimes for people to come to. But guys, I want you to, to know that we're going to go to a break here in just a moment. But I want you to come back because... Um, He's going to talk to you a little bit more, and I want you to understand something, men, women, whoever you are. Depression, mental health is real, and you need to get the help that you need if uh, you're suffering from that. And we're going to talk about more in just a moment, but we're going back to the song set, Shea Samuels, and she's going to sing Seasons. <laughs> was your perfect plan. Nobody like you, Lord. Come on, there's nobody like you, Lord. There is nobody like you. Nobody like you. Nobody like you, Lord. To everything there is a season. To every purpose there's a plan. A time to serve and a time to quit. A time to tear away and a time to mend. A time to embrace and a time to turn away. A time for love and a time for hate. A time for war and a time for peace. You created all the seasons. You have the whole world. Hitting his head. 
Hey, that was amazing singing. I love uh, Shay Samuel, so per definitely get her m uh, music into your library. But listen, we are back with more with Ron uh, Godfrey, and he is really talking about uh, his amazing acting career and the breakthroughs. But he's also talking about his um, struggle with mental health, depression. And listen, guys, I want to tell you something. It's nothing to be ashamed of. If you're struggling in that area, I want you to get some help. Our first guest, she is a counselor, so she's someone that you can certainly reach out to, but there are many uh, people that you can reach out to because let me tell you something. You do not want to get stuck in a place where you can't get free. So God wants to free you, so make sure you uh, do what you need to do to get unstuck. So man of God, you talked about uh, the fact that you were going through the depression and all of these different things, but your acting was an outlet for you. Talk about that for me. Yeah, um, <clears throat> there was a time in my life while going to depression, um, I became suicidal. Mm. And Jesus. I wrote about statistics and I found that there were 60% of people um, that died from suicide were majorly depressed. Mm. And so after I got into acting, I used that platform to help me get through, you know, certain moments. There were certain times when I had a dramatic scene to, to perform. And in performing that scene, I was actually acting from a real emotion instead of something scripted. Yeah. So when I came out of it, I, was, I felt better. Yeah. yeah, that's powerful. <laughs> that's powerful that you could use uh, the gift that God gave you to, to get some, some freedom uh, in that area. But, and you know what, I, I got to throw this in, uh, Viola Val, Val Davis, Yes. she talked about the fact that same, the same kind of thing, that mm -hmm. she, she had, had gone through such a, a hard childhood and she had, had gone through so many hard things that she would use her acting mm -hmm. to really um, to act out some of those emotions. It's therapeutic. Yeah. It's yeah, very yeah. So that that that's that's interesting to know. But you talked about those statistics. Give me those statistics again. Okay, I, I'm gonna read it straight from the book. Okay. okay. So you know we're telling the truth. You know, you know we're telling the truth. <laughs> so statistically, 60% of all people who die by suicide suffer from major depression, and there are over 350 million people worldwide that have depression. My God. My God, see, so it's, it's real and it, it affects so many people and it's sad that people have uh, uh, connected a stigma with it and so people just don't get the, the help that they exactly. need. And that's, 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 just, that's just really uh, unfortunate. So, and some people don't realize that there's a difference in being just like, I'm having a bad day, I'm depressed and actual clinical depression. Exactly. Talk about that for me. Um, there is a big difference. Um... Again, when, you have, when you're depressed, there are different, you know, levels of it. Exactly. Different yeah. levels of it. Like, you can be amongst a bunch of people, and you could be standing next to somebody crying or, or just feeling some type of way, and they wouldn't even know it because a depressed person has a way of camouflaging the appearance of being depressed. Right, right. And I was able to do that. Mm. I was able to walk around. I have a smile on my face, but on the inside, I'm torn up but you wouldn't know it. My God, my God. Okay, so <laughs> what do you say to a person who, who's experiencing this kind of thing? What do you say to them? I say to them that it's okay. If you need help, get the help. Now, I didn't need medication. Amen. But if you are a person that needs medication, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As long as you get the help. Yeah. You know, I'd rather, I rather read about your, your success story rather than to read your obituary mm. you know so get the help yeah. it's out there yeah. and there's no shame in it no there's no shame in it especially to our men it's no shame in that yeah and and men well you know people in, gen in general they they feel like well you know i can't tell anybody that i'm having this mental issue because uh, they'll look at me as less than or they'll look at me like i'm weak but w we need to break that stigma especially in the black community in exactly. the african-american community exactly. we feel like we can't go for counseling we have to work it out in other ways but let me tell you something jesus had a doctor with him walking with him so <laughs> god is good with the counselor he's good with the doctor 
because he put professionals here to do uh, what needs to be done. If you need to, an, an actor, you're not going to just say, well, let me pray for an actor. No, you go hire an <laughs> actor, somebody who can do uh, what needs to be done. So I'm just excited about that. But man of God, listen, I need you to tell the people how to contact you, first of all, okay. and, and, and also how to... Uh, to get this book if they need to, if they okay. want to get it into their library. I can be contacted or you can follow me on Instagram at I am, and that's I A M, because a lot of people put I'm. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I am. I am Ron Godfrey mm -hmm. on Facebook, Ron Godfrey. And to purchase my book, you can go on my website, which is rongodfrey.com or amazon.com, which is holding a five star rating. So I'm very Ooh, proud of that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo, woo, woo. Five star rating. Amen. <laughs> Well, man of God, I'm just telling you, you have really been uh, an inspiration, first of all, because of the way you allow God to use you, pull out your gifts, you know, and move you into uh, the places that he, he would have you to be. And that's really inspirational because people don't get it. He said it's better to be obedient than to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So you have uh, decided to live your life as unto the Lord. You've given him, yourself over to him and allow him to use uh, your gifts. And that's amazing. But let me tell you something. The main thing that I think is powerful uh, about you is um, the fact that you are so open, you're so free to let people know that you, you know, you're an actor, you're a musician, you are uh, an author, you're all of these things, Tyler Perry, doing all these different things. Did you say Netflix, which, which one of the? Prime Video. Prime and Videos. And Netflix. Well. And Netflix. BET. But, and, and BET. <laughs> but you're still open yes. and saying, look, this affected me and it could affect you as yes. well. So listen, guys, listen, please get in contact uh, uh, with this man of God because he's going to be able to help direct you. Plus, if you need him to come out and speak at your men's conferences or, you know, whatever you uh, have going on, you want him to teach from his book in your conferences, please feel free to get in contact with him and look him up because he's doing amazing things all over the place uh, in, with his acting and all these things. So he's a blessing. Look, both of my, our guests tonight were extraordinary. So please do yourself a favor and get in contact with these guests. Listen, we're going to be here, here tomorrow night. I won't be here, but Atlanta Live will be here. So what we want to say to you tonight is put it on your calendar and come back with us. Bye for now.